Real-time strategy games are certainly not dead, and neither are their cousins the real-time tactical games, but they aren't doing stellar either. Strong though they may be, they are still flesh and bone. Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign is hopefully nearing its release after three years passing from its announcement and it just got a brand new gameplay trailer. Warhammer Age of Sigmar has been a no-show so far, not even a teaser, so more luck in 2023. I remember opening the gates. While Homeworld 3 developers first gave us a brief look at gameplay and then sucker punched us with a release delay. Stormgate from X Blizzard developers dropped a questionable cinematic trailer with even worse gameplay screenshots, which don't paint a clear picture of what the hell the game is like. As opposed to Company of Heroes 3 developers, who not only came out with a playable test version, but also a release date and for 2022 no less. On the other hand, Manor Lords is driving gamers to such a hype level I haven't seen since Cyberpunk with a diverse gameplay from city building to medieval army combat. Similarly, Falling Frontiers, spaceship combat, logistics management and incredible solar system size game world is driving another major hype train, with both of these games being basically single-handedly developed by talented lone individuals. Other such talented individuals and small teams are trying to recapture that Akia's golden era with games reminiscent of Command & Conquer, especially Generals, Who, me? Welcome to the green side of life, baby! then Dune, World in Conflict, Starcraft and Warcraft, last one being almost straight out copied in Purple War with humans, orcs and elves in a story campaign and multiplayer battles. Obey the order! Wake him! Now! Liquidation, Echoes of the Past, is a project that has been resurrected and it doesn't just look to Warcraft for inspiration, but to Starcraft as well, practically taking the same page out of the same book as the developers of Stormgate, but with more classical gameplay in mind. Mission Control, we have the package. Another game which borrows heavily from its inspiration is Barkhan, as its developers went all in on recreating Dune 2000. Door of RTS, working title, is an attempt to recapture both the look and feel of classic CNC games, Tesla coils included. Red Chaos developers are doing something similar, but their inspiration is coming from the later additions to the franchise, specifically Generals. On top of all these, one AAA publisher has employed its developers to make an over-the-top classical RTS with its own type of humor and Tiberian-like story and gameplay in Tempest Rising. Row Command is an attempt to spice up RTS combat with decks of cards, while developers of Global Conflagration are mixing CNC's signature building and unit combat with World in Conflict's capture points for a hell of a fun and dynamic game. Dustfront Sloan developer went for Diesel Punk for his game setting and upgraded the StarCraft-like gameplay with an extra campaign map layer. Rattenreich developers are trying to create a completely new world and lore with animals fighting conflicts styled after human world wars. Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander fans have several games to look forward to, primarily Beyond All Reason, which looks and feels most similar to those famous huge-scale RTS games and is already playable. With Fragile Existence close behind, but with its more galactic and survival-focused gameplay, and also Sanctuary, which is not as far as in development, but definitely has the scale of it well in its sights. There are some other, more obscure RTS games like Cold Engines with its freezing winter setting and almost steampunk units, Godsworn, which is more about fantasy with tribes, gods, creatures and heroes, Siege of Yordor, which like Manor Lord mixes city building heavily with RTS combat, Imperius, which is all about space lore and starship combat, Reforger, which attempts to change the gameplay from direct control to more overhead management. Annihilate Dispense, which aims to create similar gameplay like Reforger, but with space stations and starship combat. Roman Empire Wars, which gives you the actual original legions to control, the studio included. Beneath the Mountain, where you build an underground warring kingdom and fight orc invaders, Dawn of Empires, whose developer's plan is for it to be a fantasy-based game with lots of base building and large-scale battles, 
Neolithic first state cities, whose lone developer is making a game which plays like Age of Empires, but on a world map and with a deeper unit system. Ardent Seas is a futuristic naval and land-focused RTS on an alien world with homeworld-like behemoth flagships. Mod of War is a different beast in more ways than one, especially because of biological combinations of organs as units. Commanding Nations is another modern RTS akin to Generals and developed by a talented small indie team. Of the more tactical variety of real-time games with minimal or no base building, we have Regiments, which takes us to Germany in 1989 for a Cold War gun hot scenario between Soviets and Western powers. Tactical Doctrine, ex Cold War game, has the same idea with slightly different execution and longer development. Broken Arrow is yet another such game with a very similar setting and gameplay, so all you armchair generals with a particular liking for Cold War era battles will have plenty to choose from. For those of us who prefer a more futuristic setting, there is Terminator Dark Fate finally giving us a glimpse of the human vs AI machine warfare from the movie universe. Stardust Exile is similar, but even more futuristic, and we have already been chased off the planet and traveled the galaxy. Ephemeris, name change pending, is a much more homeworld-like game, down to combat formations and massive battleships, which is what we will have in Era 1 as well, just with the added bonus of total ship customization and building. Dust Fleet has a similar sci-fi space setting, but executes gameplay differently, with the extra micro and macro management layers. A more historical and squad-based combat game is The Valiant, which promises leveling, customization and persistence of troops. Similarly, Man of War 2, set during the Second World War, prides itself on historical accuracy and stunningly beautiful all-out air, armor and infantry combat. Immortal Gates of Pyre is based on more standard RTS gameplay and fantasy units, like what you're used to from Warcraft and Starcraft. Hearts of Myriad is also fantasy-based, with a bigger scale, larger maps, faster battles and lots of helpful and destructive spells. So what is the objective conclusion here? It's not all rainbows and Tesla coils for RTS games, but it's certainly not a dead genre with some AAA projects ready and on the horizon and a couple of really promising indie projects in between. I will now show and tell you about the games I haven't talked about in my previous similar lists of upcoming real-time strategy games, while also updating you on the most important news about the rest of them. First of these is Company of Heroes 3, which is currently scheduled for release for the 17th of November 2022. Its third playtest slash alpha allowed players to get a taste of the Northern African campaign in a single mission in this normal linear campaign style which does not feature the new dynamic strategy layer like the Italian campaign does. Players also experienced more of the four warring sides, which at launch will consist of German Wehrmacht and Afrika Corps as separate factions and Allied forces as British and Commonwealth, while the USA remains its own faction. Some of the notable gameplay additions and upgrades are the new tactical pause system for single player, breaching buildings with infantry to take them over, and extra destruction to allow for dynamic changes on the battlefield and the all-important cover. Now, you might think there is no cover in outer space, but you would be wrong and also ambushed like a space rookie on his first deployment in Falling Frontier. And then you would be captured and interrogated. But I'm getting ahead of myself. This project has been in the works for quite a while now, never ceasing to amaze its future players with new gameplay features and breathtaking visuals, but also disappointing them with release plan changes. It is an RTS in its core, even though the incredible game world size, lots of features, mechanics and the extensive UI might remind you of a 4X game. The latest development updates have added and refined the game even more, with the mining mechanic, which was originally just a prototype for fun, now part of the game as well as general and specific UI overhauls. These are aimed to let the player have easier access to all the data about the multiple zones of the solar system in which he has an invested interest in. This is a game I could spend hours talking about, but it's not yet time. So for more info about it, check out the other video linked up here and in the description.
As I mentioned in the intro, Knights of Honor 2 Sovereign's development is reaching the end of its potential player base patience. As we got to read its 28 development blog at the making of this video, with no release date in sight, nor at the end of the brand new gameplay trailer. Considering the mammoth wait time, this game better rock my world when I get to finally play it. And speaking of finally playing one of these games, Regiments should be out as you are watching this video, considering its August 16 release date. It is one of those Cold War real-time tactical games I mentioned, with NATO and Warsaw Pact shelling each other to pieces over German soil in 1989. Both urban areas and war-torn nature will be your battlefields as heavy armor rolls in, attack planes dive in and helicopters hunt for tanks while you direct everything from above like a true armchair general. The platoon command system is specifically designed to let you orchestrate battles, call in fresh forces, customize your troop composition and try out new tactics if you can't make headway with your original ones. As the famous quote goes, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. With dozens of authentic war vehicles, several factions, competent AI and both skirmish and a campaign, you should have many hours of fun in regiments. And if there is one game I hope to have immeasurable hours of fun in, it's Manor Lords. This medieval mashup of city building, management, combat and many other elements has already drawn in literally thousands upon thousands of player eyes because of its stunning presentation and bucket load of features, as well as developers' grand vision and incredible attention to detail. In-game content is continuously refined and upgraded with no small amount of community feedback and that community has already started to alpha test the game. When the lone developer writes his blogs and updates, they look like a shopping list us gamers would dream of, with basically every gameplay element getting upgraded in one way or another and new ones being added while the game keeps growing in scale and scope. The developer has finally agreed to a deal with a publisher, gotten a mega grant from Epic because of the Unreal Engine used for the game and added good old games to the list of digital shops where the game will be available for purchase once it's finally finished. On that front, no news, just a clear when it's done statement. The situation is similar to what we find ourselves in with Homeworld 3. Regardless of the fact that instead of a lone indie developer, the game has a known AAA developer and publisher behind it. The release has been pushed back to 2023, while we got a promise that at the 2022's Gamescom we will get to see more than in the previous trailer and dev blogs. My personal hype train for this game is at its last pieces of ember, as it has been so long in coming that I just want it to be good have a great campaign like its predecessors and to hopefully relaunch the franchise we love so much. There honestly isn't any other game world or lore which gives me such goosebumps when I hear its soundtrack Was it so long ago? or voiceover. No, not so long. But not long enough. Another game which hits that nostalgic feel is definitely Barkhan. It's basically a recreation of Dune 2000, despite its developers claiming only inspiration from it. A dust bowl of a planet, inhabited by massive earthworms, which eat harvesters in the deep desert as three factions fight for control, is only the top of the ice well, top of the dunes to use a more appropriate term. While names might be different, each of the three warring clans represents factions very much alike to those in Dune 2000, with base building, foundations for such, defense towers and harvesting mechanics being too similar to ignore. I have already talked about all of this in a separate video, link up here and below, so I will now go on to the next game on this list. A very different and much more original nostalgia heavy hitter is Dorf RTS, which has yet to gain its official name. Its developer goes full retro with a game which looks most like the classic Command & Conquer games, but borrows more than a few concepts from StarCraft. The main one is using buildings as temporary caps for unit recruiting, 
So while there won't be an upper limit to the number of units you can recruit, you will have to lay down buildings to expand your current unit cap. All the units will also have StarCraft-like animated portraits to give it extra artistic flair. The rest of the gameplay is base building and unit combat with land, air and even naval units. For now we know of the Warband and Guerrilla factions, while the game will also feature upgradable buildings, manual and automated transports, trucks which carry supplies for construction, and units will be able to both garrison civilian buildings and storm them to clear them of enemies. Oh, and there will be stealth tanks, Tesla weapons and mechs. The special type of humor which is employed in wacky CNC games like Red Alert and Generals is something developers of the newly announced Tempest Rising are mixing with Tiberium Story, base building and fast fluid hard hitting combat. In its two 15 mission campaigns you lead two very asymmetrical factions in yet another war on an already messed up planet for a new mineral which has been discovered on sites of nuclear fallout across the globe. Those tempest vines grow unchecked and make the basis for a new economy. The third faction of Tempest Rising shows up in skirmish custom games and ranked multiplayer matchmaking with ELO rating. Maps will have neutral structures to contest and neutral populations to contend with, and even the staple explosive barrels. The built-in customization options and secondary abilities each unit has will offer plenty of strategic approaches to every kind of player. The voiceover by an almost Duke Nukem type of character <laughs> Get to work. is just the cherry on top of this powder keg. Another passion project, this one from a small team of homeworld modders, is called ERA-1. It's definitely inspired by homeworld and its space fleet combat, but it brings its own unique elements to the formula with not only deep space ship customization, but also component by component construction. I have talked about this and all the other gameplay elements in much more detail in a video while its Kickstarter was going on, which you can see using the link up here and below. It was successfully funded and on its way to a playable build in 2022 and for a wider audience in 2023. Going back to planet Earth and a few decades into its past is where we get to play our tactical real-time battles in Broken Arrow. This will be about large-scale all-out warfare between the USA and Russia factions with hundreds of different units. Everything from infantry, tanks and supporting units to helicopters and airstrikes. The latest gameplay trailer showed us that it won't differ much in its main battle map systems from similar games in its subgenre, but where it differs is the level of customization. You will be able to modify the specific components of your units either individually or as a loadout for your next combat engagement. Aircraft parts like weapons, fuel tanks and even countermeasures will be open for you to tinker with as well as the armor, weapons and defensive systems of your vehicles. Terrain and logistics are also mentioned as important factors in deciding the victor. But honestly, there are no victors in war. And as the famous quote from Fallout goes, war, war never changes. But companies do change. And it is what led to many RTS developers from Blizzard leaving and creating a new studio in which they are working on Stormgate, a game which is really hard to categorize even after its recent cinematic trailer and few screenshots. What is certain is that it will be a free-to-play real-time strategy game with humans battling aliens in a mixed sci-fi and fantasy setting. Think of it as a mix between Warcraft and Starcraft. It will feature a campaign which will be playable cooperatively and serve as an introduction to its casual and competitive multiplayer modes. It is being made in Unreal Engine 5, so we do expect the visuals to be good and the few screenshots there are certainly point to that but the somewhat weak cinematic trailer left us with a lot of questions about the story and characters which were, and still are, a big landmark of those developers' previous games. The names like Artus, Prince of Lodron and Kerrigan, Queen of Blades and their stories have left an immeasurable imprint on the world of RTS games and perhaps even set the bar too high. While we are on the subject of Warcraft, here is one game which aims to recapture some of that look and feel. Purple War. I know, I was taken aback by its name when I first read it, but bear with me on this one. It has three factions, tribes of humans, orcs and elves, 
and will feature a campaign for each, some of which was already playable during its playtest. You could say it blatantly copies many aspects of Warcraft, from research collection and building, as well as unit types and looks, down to the upgrade system and UI, and you would be totally right. Upgrade completed. Hopefully, its story and characters will make it more unique. The orcs took our Andrew. But the multiplayer should find a proper audience, considering it won't require much learning to get used to. Almost like slipping into a pair of old shoes you forgot you owned. A game which will probably produce a similar feeling just for CNC journalist players is Red Chaos, which is being developed by a small indie team and they have sent me some exclusive footage to show off to you. Its gameplay holds no surprises. You start with the HQ, construct additional buildings, gather resources, recruit modern vehicles of war and fight it out in the campaign mode or in the multiplayer with up to 8 players. There will also be upgrades to gain and use many different units to outsmart and outplay your opponents. The story is about a modern-day empire in shambles trying to reunite the territories it once held, taking over one free state at a time. If you are still holding on to Zero Hour as your modern RTS bible and playing it over Hamachi or Game Ranger, you may want to wishlist this one for future battles. Now I want to give you some updates and news about Dustfleet. That space RTS I showcased a long time ago in a similar list, but its developers haven't managed to make much progress beyond finding a publisher. The mix of macro interstellar maps with fleet actions and micro equipment managing for individual ships will hopefully one day reach our PCs. If you are itching for something different with cold steel instead of lasers and guns, you might like The Valiant. It is set in the Middle Ages with some myth and fantasy elements and promises an epic single-player campaign with custom cinematics and a narrated journey as well as multiplayer. Developers are hoping to bring many new players in for the cooperative three-player last man standing mode and player versus player ranked single and team battles with cosmetic rewards. And multiplayer is exactly what I have enjoyed a lot in the second playtest and included tournament developers of Global Conflagration organized for their upcoming RTS which is a mix of CNC generals and world in conflict. The full game will have a single player campaign but for now they have added a new faction, maps and extra features, some of which I already showcased in my previous videos about it linked up here and in the description. Now the part you might find annoying but it really helps my channel. Don't forget to like the video if you have been enjoying it so far and leave me a comment about your favorite ever RTS game or character. One of the few proper successors of Total Annihilation and Supreme Commander that are currently in development is called Beyond All Reason. It has an alpha version you can play right now with huge scale, 400 different types of units, 4 factions and everything simulated in real time from a single missile to armies in excess of 5000 units. They have added elements such as radar not working in mountain terrain and nuclear strikes reshaping the landscape which are just awesome features to keep in mind while playing and strategizing. Developers continuously organize tournaments, optimize their engine and work on both the planned campaign and multiplayer. A very different kind of a game which has a near release date is Reforger, an RTS whose developers want to change the way we view command of units in this type of a game. Their idea is for the player to be a high general who thinks about his unit's equipment, customization of skills and unit variety more than the actual details of every engagement. In this medieval fantasy universe, humans, aided by wizards, fight orcs with cold steel and powerful spells. Each unit's behavior is altered depending on their loadout and they can even become workers at the click of a button. There is tech research, resource production and building upgrades to play with while trying to regain control of a time machine and put an end to the conflict once and for all. Another game with a mix of medieval and fantasy slash mythological elements which just showed up on my radar is Godsform. Here, pagan tribes fight it out with crusaders, while players get to control not just regular human units, but also hero units, creatures and godly powers. Beyond the info and screenshots, little can be learned and developers told me no video for a few months. It is a similar situation with Cold Engines, a steampunk multiplayer RTS with the cold, harsh frost environment in which players will be able to even steal their enemies' vehicles and turn them back into resources. 
a game mechanic I remember using in a couple of really old games I don't even remember the names of, but hopefully you can remind me in the comments. This game will feature two factions and even some wild barbarian tribes. On the topic of tribes, there is one empire which was renowned for either crushing them or converting them. In Roman Empire Wars, you play as a Roman general who gathers his legions for war far and wide. Greece, Carthage, Persia, Egypt and even Great Britain will be your battlefields. Units look and behave similar to Total War games, or at least that is how much can be noticed in the trailer footage. I am not too sure about this game or its features, as it looks more like one of those projects that promises a lot, but is stuck in development hell. Of course, I would rather be wrong than right on that one. Fast forward once more to the era of Cold War, we have Tactical Doctrine, which was originally called Cold War Game. It is another tactical real-time game with no bases, but pure modern all-out warfare. Similarities to Broken Arrow and Regiments are obvious, and it is going to be interesting to see if it can carve a niche for itself once it is fully released. Fast forward a few more centuries and we come to Stardust Exile and Fragile Existence, which share a similar topic, the fall of humankind and our eviction from planet Earth, as well as a continuous fight for survival in outer space. The gameplay is where they differ quite a lot. In Stardust Exile, which features a single player mode and an MMORTS mode, players create their own ship designs with an in-game procedural ship generator and travel nearly infinite star systems which are also procedurally generated. We will know more once we see proper gameplay trailers. Fragile Existence is much more flushed out when it comes to actual gameplay with planetary conquest, resource extraction and starships which carry you from system to system ahead of your arch nemesis. There is both ground and orbital combat, a planet and a scenario editor and a non-linear story mode. It does not hold a fixed scenario but an ever-changing one to provide different playthroughs but at the cost of a cohesive story and character elements. There will be room to customize your fleet and units and even separate your forces into smaller autonomous groups across the stars. Sanctuary is another sci-fi real-time grand scale game with upwards of 10,000 units on a battlefield inside a Dyson Sphere. That truly is a seriously high bar these indie developers have put up alongside multiplayer with up to 8 players and huge maps to accommodate all of this. They aren't planning on skipping on the graphics or unit types either and it will be a delicate balance to keep between great visual effects, 50 types of units and just insanely big armies. Progression is slow, but they are getting there, even already planning ahead with modding support. On the opposite side of the scales, Rattenreich developers want much smaller scale battles but with lots more technical options. For this, they have also created a whole new universe of humanoid rats, mice, roaches and lizards equipped with dieselpunk and steampunk weaponry and tech. The two warring sides and their animal species have very different biological and technological looks and combat tactics, but in line with our own world wars. There will also be naval combat and a fully destructible environment which reminds of Company of Heroes. This means cover is a big factor as well as units, extra equipment and abilities. There will be the holy trinity of RTS gameplay modes to choose from, single player campaign, skirmish and multiplayer. There might even be an FPS mode included, but this was only a small tease from the developers. The graphics though look mind-blowing. Rogue Command does not feature such a level of fidelity and it is set in a sci-fi universe, but its idea is to bring some deck building into the classical RTS equation of CNC and StarCraft. Plan is to have hundreds of blueprint cards that add a new building to your current match like factories, support buildings, turrets or super weapons. You choose from a selection of cards and try to set up synergies and combinations which will beat your opponent's setup. Cards will also change both units and buildings to give them new skills or abilities. If you have ever played Monster Train, you should be familiar with this system. Additionally, developers are working on distinct events and hazards on maps which will be used in a match by any player for a destructive trap or ambush. You will find yourself using tanks, mechs, 
and all sorts of vehicles of several factions. Altogether, it is a very interesting concept and I wish the devs best of luck. Going back to simpler RTS gameplay, we might as well look at Liquidation Echoes of the Past again as this project was shut down for a time, but it's back with even a demo of sorts to experience its core gameplay. And that is basically a heavy mix of Warcraft and Starcraft with some parts of it looking like regular Warhammer or Warhammer 40k. Yeah, it's quite the combo of lore and tech with the resource collection, base building and unit recruitment at its core. Unit ready. Developers plan to deliver both a campaign played from several viewpoints and a fun multiplayer with commanders as hero units sprinkled between the regular ones. Mercenaries will also be available for hiring to give your regular forces some new tactical options. Another game which is going for similar gameplay minus the hero units is Dustfront. Inspired by not just StarCraft but also Command & Conquer, Dawn of War and Dune, the lone developer behind this dieselpunk post-apocalyptic RTS went to create a whole overall campaign map layer. There are no multiplayer plans, so this is strictly a single-player experience of battling on a world ravaged by thousands of years of war. It will have a replayable story campaign with a map on which you upgrade your global command center, research new tech and prepare for your next mission. Inside of these, you play with one of the four factions and gameplay consists of resource collection, recruiting an army, power plant construction, conquering additional outposts and destroying enemy units and bases. What drew my eye to this project is the art style, which is a bit dark, but also quite visceral, especially because of the fantastic unit destruction animations. Siege of Eardor is a game I have been waiting to see an actual gameplay trailer of for a long time, as the game's description and screenshots hint at something similar to Manor Lords, but in a dark medieval fantasy setting. Its gameplay might be more in the line of city builder, but it also has survival, resource gathering and real-time combat among many other features. It's not a clean-cut RTS, but forgive me for being intrigued and including it in this list. More info will follow once an actual gameplay trailer is released. Heart of Muriot is another game with an open playtest you could all try out and I have done so myself. The current build is of course not indicative of final release, but it's a very interesting game concept. With its high tower mages sending out spells in the midst of face-to-face -face melee combat between mini voxel warriors in their formations, those squads of units can gain experience, level up and be improved. There is of course base building with unit recruitment, conquest of NPC bases and even portals for quick transportation between maps which players can create themselves. It will have an actual story-driven single-player campaign, well, several in fact, one for each of the factions, which are made up of several fantasy races from elves to dwarves. The wizards I mentioned and their towers are a big part of gameplay and those spells can be unlocked and upgraded through research. One more game which is being developed by a single person and whose progress I have been following for years, but which will soon be known under a different name, is Ephemeris. It is almost Homeworld 2.0 if you look at the list of amazing features, starting with realistic, physics-based spaceship propulsion and movement based on linear and angular acceleration and other real forces. Then you have the first-person aspect of actually flying these spaceships yourself, as hundreds of missiles fly around your ship and lasers and plasma weapons streak past. Ship sizes range from the smallest fighter class to massive battleships and carrier classes. Naturally, formations play a big part of fleet battles as well as counterplay of weapon systems. Beyond just ship combat, there is a whole strategy layer where you expand through the galaxy and have to manage production, food and research. Now I know I didn't cover in detail all 45 games I mentioned and that there are probably some new games which got announced during this year's Gamescom. That is why I will be back for another similar video to check back on the real-time strategy genre's health and make sure it still has a pulse. Use the cards shown here to learn about more RTS games and feel free to mention titles I might have missed in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I wish you all happy gaming.